All right. Moving on, we got Fist of Jiraxis. Whenever you play or discard this, deal four damage to a random enemy. So they kind of ported the madness mechanic from Magic into Hearthstone. <clears throat> it's exciting. I mean, there are a couple of cards in this set that really encourage the whole discarding thing. This is probably the most playable one. Uh, this might be what what we wanted Soulfire to be in the old Zoo deck. Soulfire used to be very common in Zoo until they nerfed it to one mana, and even when it cost zero, it was good, but it wasn't like core. Like everyone played it, but it was definitely cuttable. Um, Fist of Jiraxis might get us back to that point where we're playing a card uh, that deals like direct four damage, and it might really change the lethal math with Zoo. Um, I, I don't think that meeting this condition is very difficult with Warlock. I think that if you're playing a double Doomguard aggressive deck, you're going to draw both Doomguards because fuck me. And I think you're, when that happens, you're probably going to have Fist of Jiraxis at some point because you're going to be tapping and stuff. <clears throat> playing it from your hand is going to disappoint you most of the time, but uh, I don't know. Getting a zero mana effect is just pretty nuts in a lot of cases, and... I think this is, is definitely playable, like uh, only in the really aggressive list though, because it deals it to a random enemy, so like at least half the time you're hitting them in the face, which means that you need to be playing this in a deck that cares about dealing face damage, which is going to be aggressive Warlock decks. <clears throat> Alright, moving on to Dreadsteed. Dreadsteed's a tough one to evaluate, it took me a, a while to figure out what to do about this card. Like. It's such a weird effect. Getting it off a of Void Caller, people say, is disappointing, but if your deck is built around Dreadsteed, it's not that bad. It gives you a lot of options with, uh, you know, obviously power overwhelming buffs. With Sacrificial Pack, I don't think it's that good because you're just like, you wouldn't put a card in your deck that just says gain five life for zero, probably. Um, this is a lot less consistent than that kind of card. I think the Dreadsteed is probably just going to take too many turns to get its value out of it. Uh, you really need it to be working like an engine for a long time. And um, as cool as you can do things with like Baron Rivendare and all that, I think it's still a little too slow because the decks, um, like the tempo-based and aggressive decks are going to be so efficient now, so aggressive, that uh, I expect Dreadsteed to just not see too much play because it's not, not good enough at keeping up with those decks. Tiny Knight of Evil. Whenever you discard a card, gain plus one, plus one. Uh, so, I, I don't know if this how this works with Doomguard. Do you get plus 2 plus 2, or do you get plus 1 plus 1? I'm not exactly sure. Either way, I'm pretty sure it's mediocre. Um, it, it's another, like, 2-mana Warlock card for aggressive Warlock lists, like Wrathguard, but Zoo didn't need more 2-drops. You already had Haunted Creeper, you already had Merubian Egg, you already had Knife Juggler. All these cards are better than... Wrath Guard and Tidy Knight of Evil. So even if you can enable these, I don't think they're competitive enough to compete with those two drops. Even something like Echoing Ooze, I can take advantage of in a more token-oriented zoo deck, uh, whereas Tiny Knight of Evil is like a pile of stats. If it lives, and I play it in the mid-game, and it, like I have the card uh, in my hand to make me discard, I think it's just too inconsistent, and I don't want to play this card in turn two, because turn three you're not going to have a good discard effect. I don't think that these new discard mechanic cards are going to make me want to build, like, a Succubus Zoo deck. Um, three health is just really, really, really weak. It dies to most two drops, and it dies to most removal spells for two mana. So yeah, too fragile, I think. Uh, Dark Bargain says, uh, destroy two random enemy minions, discard two random cards. Uh, this is... Kind of interesting, I guess. I wouldn't play more than one of it in a more aggressive list. Destroying two random enemy minions is definitely powerful. Like, it's not difficult to empty your hand as a warlock, and this kind of effect is actually really strong. Uh, especially, you know, on turn six. If I can, if I can have an early game board presence with my zoo deck, I can usually use my haunted creepers and stuff to kill off their little minions. Um, and then when you dark bargain, you're gonna kill massive creatures. Um, I'm assuming you can still play it if they only control one minion, uh, otherwise it just becomes too easy to play around, but it's definitely a swingy and powerful effect, and it actually might see play as a one-of 
if decks with large non death rattle minions become popular but i i don't expect that to be very likely so um will will dark bargain get played i'm definitely gonna lose a game to it out of nowhere but i don't think it'll be a common card and uh you most likely won't see it in most warlock decks but if you want another enabler for fistage or access you have it so it's kind of cool i guess maybe you want like the third doom guard and this is what that card will be and moving on, we got Fearsome Doomguard, which is a 7-mana 6-8. He's not so fearsome. Um, I guess he's okay in Arena. Yeah. Moving on to Void Crusher, we got... Uh, destroy a random minion for each player with Inspire. Wow. Um, so that's definitely way too slow. But it's interesting that... How do I put it? They, they basically they printed two new, like cheaper demons and two. Really, you could argue three like bigger demons if you count Dreadsteed. So the card that this affects the most is Bane of Doom, which is a very playable card, very strong. Um, you're not going to get Malganus as often now, and I think that overall, uh, Bane of Doom is a little bit more diluted. So you're not going to get like Blood Imp. You're not going to get the absolute worst demon as much, and you're also not going to get. The broken demons as much um overall bane of doom still very strong doesn't change too much in power level but you're not going to get as many free wins off of malganus uh, or as many auto losses off of blood imp for what whatever that's worth uh but yeah void crusher i think it's just too slow too inconsistent like you, you want to play low curve stuff with your with your warlock decks because <clears throat> your hero power will give you a way to constantly use all your mana even in the later stages of the game Alright, moving on to Warrior, uh, we've got Sea Plunderer, it's a Boulder Fist Ogre, and when you draw this card, you deal 1 damage to all your minions. Is this good enough for Patron? God, no. Patron is a deck that got, like, no new cards in this set, and still might be the best deck playing literally zero cards in the new set. Um, but this is, <clears throat> even in Enrage-based Warrior decks, it until they change something in Patron, there's no reason to not play that variant of deal damage to my own stuff warrior. Like, Patron just does everything better than like almost every class in the game, uh, that particular warrior deck. So it's tough to justify building a different warrior deck to damage my own stuff when there's already such a good list available. Yeah, so because Sea Plunderer isn't good enough for that list, I think, unless there's a nerf, uh, then maybe you would kind of play this in an Enrage-based Warrior, but even then it just seems weak. Like, you can't control when this happens. It will fuck you once in a while. Um, it, it's not great to play for 6 mana. So Sea Plunderer, I feel pretty confident saying, is a pretty bad card. Moving on, we have Varian Rin, which is a 10 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. This is like the legendary that I think is probably people are probably most excited for in the set. Uh, and Battle Cry is draw three minions, put any minions you drew directly into the battlefield. My initial impression was that this card is very good. And as far as the value you get from it, yes, it's good. Yes, it's good against Big Game Hunter. Yes, it's good against Silence Effects. There's nothing that like wrecks this card. The question is, uh, in what matchups am I going to want to play a 10-mana dude uh, in my deck? And the answer is really only m control mirrors. Uh, against mid-range decks, if I play this and I don't pull a Sludge Belcher off of it, I have a very good chance of just dying. Um, because when you play it for 10, you can't armor. You can't play a defensive spell. You can't do anything. With Emperor Thorson, maybe you could play it and Shield Slam, but that's the dream, you know? Most of the time, you're going to play Varian Rin, uh, and you're going to win the game if you get another turn, but all too often that won't happen. I think that if I'm building a late-game-oriented warrior deck, I might still play Varian Rin just as like my only expensive card to beat other control decks, because if I play it in my control deck and they don't, I have almost no way of losing late-game, I guess. But it's... It's just so bad in like 80% of matchups just because it's a 10-mana dude that I think um, it's not nearly as good as people think it is. But uh, 
rather than playing a ton of big creatures in Control Warrior like Ragnaros and Ysera and Sylvanas and Boom, instead of playing all of them, maybe you just play Varian Rin and then you play like the low curve uh, warrior stuff and try to win off that Inspire thing just like Paladin that I was talking about. I think that's the way that I would play Varian as like a way to win the control mirror but only commit one deck slot to a large animal rather than playing a ton of clunky creatures in my deck that I run the risk of drawing in the early game and losing to aggro because of it. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's definitely good. I think um, I think I will play him, but I won't play him in a deck with other big minions, which makes his effect a lot less good, but still good. So, I don't know. I, I think... People play him a lot at first, but I think he will slowly become rotated out of most warrior decks. And uh, it's tough to say if the new warrior decks will be better than Patron, because if they aren't, people will just keep playing Patron. So we'll see. Then we got uh, Bolster. I know we already covered that one. Alex Straza's champion. Battle cry for holding a dragon gain plus one attack and charge. And if you don't have a dragon, it's still River Crocolisk. So <clears throat> this seems like a pretty good card to me. I think that uh, Dragon Warrior is definitely a thing that we've already seen. We've seen it get rank 1 multiple times uh, in China, in NA, when people brought it over. It's definitely a tried and true strategy, and Alexstrasza's Champion gives you another early game way to interact. Um, it's definitely a good card in the mid game too. <clears throat> I think that depending on how strong the Dragon lists are, they might be like the new variant of Control Deck, and you might just hybridize them with the good Inspire cards. But the question is, like, how many two mana cards can you put in your deck? Like, are you going to play this over Fiery War Axe? You're probably not. It doesn't get as much value as Cruel Taskmaster. It's not as flexible as Cruel Taskmaster for enabling Execute and stuff. So, do you cut Taskmaster? Probably not. A card just has too much flexibility with cards like Acolyte of Pain and Big Game Hunter and all that. So what are you cutting for this? I think you cut Armorsmith, I guess, but then that's also going to hurt you against Face Hunter decks. <clears throat> so I just, I, I don't know what the new Warrior decks are going to look like and what cards you can and cannot remove because there are times where I just build like five or six Warrior decks that all seem very good to me. Like I can build Raging Morgan Warrior right now, which plays no bad cards. All 30 cards I'm very happy with being in the deck. And it's making use of things like Rampage and Charge that don't see play in other warrior lists. And that deck isn't really lacking anything. Like, it just is what it is. And this is the same thing. Like, I could build a Dragon Warrior deck. The tools are there. It wouldn't be lacking anything. The question is, what is Dragon Warrior going to do better than Patron? And what is it going to do better than normal Control Warrior? And um, what is Elixstraza's Champion going to do that other two drops can't? And I, I don't know that this is better than Cruel Taskmaster, and I don't know that this is better than Armorsmith. So um, I'm not sure if it'll see play. It's really tough to say. I, I'm I'm leaning towards no, actually, but we'll see. Like, I don't know. Two mana, three, three charge is nuts. We've never seen stats like that. It might be a lot better than I'm giving it credit for. We'll see. Uh, then we've got Magnetar Alpha. Also damages the minions next to whomever he attacks. He's got the Faux Reaper text. <clears throat> Three health dies to everything. Weapons you can't really interact with. It dies to spells. But if you do get to attack, um, it's pretty nutty. The thing is, if, you're, if your opponent has a lot of dudes in play, and you play Minotaur Alpha, they're just going to trade for him. <clears throat> if your opponent doesn't have any minions in play, or doesn't have many at all, and you play Magnetar Alpha... They're just not going to play more minions into it. They're going to spend their turn playing a spell or killing him. So I never see this as like, oh, I'm, I killed three creatures with my Magnetar. I don't think that would ever happen unless you gave it charge. Um, but you could try to hide it behind taunts and make their plays very awkward where they don't want to play anything into you. But I feel like the, the exact... They have to have like a weak minion. You have to have a taunt and a Magnetar. They have to have no way to deal with your taunt. It's too many things that have to go right, and then they have to have no removal spell. It, Yeah, I, I, I think this is just pretty awful, and I don't think it, it will ever see play because of the amount of things that have to go your way for it to get value. <clears throat> Ogremar Aspirant is the next one. It's a 3-mana, three 3-3. Three, three. Inspire, give your, attack, give your weapon plus 1 attack. Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously doing a lot less for you than giving your weapon 1 durability. 
most of the time getting the one attack on your weapon isn't going to change what you can and can't trade into there aren't a lot of minions that have stats that survive a despite attack on the second charge <clears throat> so i feel like ogremar aspirant is just not the kind of inspire card that's going to get a lot of value in the late game especially because half the time you're just not going to have a weapon so i don't expect us to see a lot of play at all unfortunately and then we have sparring partner which is the other two drop in a long line of two drop options for defensive warrior decks and it's good 3-2 taunt for two great stats the fact that it gives them another minion taunt means that late game it's pretty sick you can do a lot of great stuff with it give your shield maiden taunt things like that um, it's definitely a card that is playable but again you're competing with armorsmith war axe cruel taskmaster dragon bro Luxstraza's champion if you're playing you know that kind of list and on top of that you're competing with garrison commander which i think is just like probably better um especially considering the just a card true heart synergy with warrior because just warrior is like the best deck for just a card true heart because the, the way that it upgrades your hero power is like the best it straight up doubles it your class that is having these long drawn out games or your hero powering a lot uh, so Garrison Commander complements that card very well. That's a card you're going to play in your defensive deck. So I, I don't know if uh, Sparring Partner is good enough. Maybe I'll play one. I'm, not, I'm really not sure if it's good. But it, it is immune to silence as far as that goes. And it definitely has a lot of potential. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it pop up here and there. Maybe as a one of. Maybe just as a staple two of. It really just depends on how it lines up uh, compared to the other Warrior two drops. Uh, have I done Grand Crusader yet? It's a 6-mana 5-5. Five five. It says add a random Paladin card to your hand uh, with the Battle Cry. So a 6-mana card will pretty much always get value. Something like Sylvanas or Cairn is just going to get you more value than this Battle Cry on average. Sometimes you'll get Tyrion and you live the dream, but most of the time, 6-mana slot, very competitive. This is worse than Emperor. It's worse than Sylvanas usually. It's just not going to see too much play. <clears throat> Light's Champion, 3 mana, 4 3, Battle Cry. Silence a Demon. Hmm. I don't think it's a lever C play, right? I mean, it's just a neutral. It's just a vanilla 3 mana, 4 3. And if you happen to be getting paired against uh, Demon decks, then it's like. I play Void Caller, you play Light's Champion. You live the dream. You silence like the best demon to silence. All is right in the world, and what happened? We traded cards, and you're up a mana. That's not, that's not a great exchange. It's like 80% of the time, it's going to be just a vanilla 4-3, which is unimpressive. And uh, when you do silence a minion, it's, you're going to be very disappointed. I'd rather play something like Spellbreaker over this. Just pay one more mana, have a silence all the time, and silence non-demons like Twilight Drake, Nerubian Egg, that kind of stuff. All right. <clears throat> moving on we got uh twilight guardian i don't know if i've covered this one it's the new uh four mana dragon it's another card that i'm gonna uh, definitely be playing in the dragon priest deck it says a uh, battle cry if you're holding a dragon gain plus one attack and taunt so you're basically saving a mana on on a uh, fen creeper or you're gaining a health on senjin depending on how you look at it uh, that is a very big deal, that extra point of health. The fact that it's a dragon in and of itself that cares about other dragons, that is the kind of card that that deck needs, in my experience. Um, when I was playing Dragon Priest uh, during the 24-hour Legend Grind thing that we did, I felt like Dragonkin Sorcerer was very valuable because um, it was like a dragon in and of itself, but I could also play it earlier in the game than these random 9-mana cards. Because I don't want to keep Ysera in my opening hand just to enable my cards. Twilight Guardian, on the other hand, this is a card that I can like comfortably keep in my opening hand. Knowing that it won't rot in my hand forever. I can play it um, in the mid-game. But it's also going to enable my Twilight Whelps and my 2-mana Priest from Dragon Bro, whose name I forgot already. Uh, the 2-4 Taunt for 2. So... Uh, very powerful card. Outside of Priest especially, um, this, this is something you'd definitely be playing in uh, Dragon Warrior. Uh, it's something you'd definitely be playing in Dragon Paladin. Like, if you have a dragon, I, I feel pretty safe saying that this is better than Shredder. Um, 
if you have the dragon and that is very rare that i would say that something is better than shredder but if you meet the condition this card is and that's the kind of card that you need to to print in order to have it see play in a, in a dragon deck for sure also protects you against a patron which is cool moving on we got mogor's champion uh, six mana, eight five, fifty percent chance to attack the wrong enemy, zero percent chance to be played and constructed. Moving on, we have Fencing Coach, which is a three mana two two battle cry. The next time you use your hero power, it costs two less. Uh, I did like I thought about this, and if you think about it, like if you're playing it in Warlock, it's a three mana two two battle cry, lose two life, draw a card. That's not that good, especially because it doesn't let you double draw on turn five. Um, it, it's just, like, the fact that you get to bank the two mana is so interesting, and on a lot of other effects, this would be so broken, but there's not much that I gain from being able to choose what turn I inspire. If you play Fencing Coach, the coolest thing you can do with this is maybe, like, set up a turn five nexus champion sarad um and just get the value immediately and then like ha play play your inspire minion on curve which is actually super dangerous for a lot of decks i guess with all the expensive inspire guys this is actually kind of ridiculous like with the priest one this lets you do crazy stuff because if you can turn your your nine mana inspire minion into a seven mana inspire minion that's actually pretty sick so storing the two mana for that is actually could have a lot of value with the expensive inspire minions uh and if you just play it like on curve as a minion to do stuff early game it's not the absolute worst i mean it's pretty bad but fencing coach i guess might see play to enable the expensive inspire minions but even then it's just so sketchy i don't know it's, it seems like playing a lot of mediocre cards to get a slightly non-mediocre effect so most likely this won't see play. The best decks usually play a bunch of independently good cards. Uh, Sideshow Spell Eater, Battle Cry, copy your opponent's hero power. Uh, rather than putting Lord of the Arena in my deck to choose what hero power I want, I could hit Escape and Concede and pick the other class uh, and not have to, yeah, play six mana, six fives. So that's probably the better way to do it. Not a big fan of this guy. It would be kind of cool if you could copy the hero powers of the adventure bosses, but that would make a lot of them a little too easy to beat on Heroic, I think, and uh, it doesn't work, unfortunately, so... Eh. Not the most exciting card. Uh, Ice Howl, Charge, Can't Attack Heroes. I don't remember if I covered this one or not. Um, it might see play in Druid. It most likely won't see play in anything, though. Just too slow, too clunky, and... You're going to lose most of its health the first turn that it's out, killing something. Saboteur is a 3-mana 4-3. Your opponent's hero power costs 5 more next turn. <clears throat> so if it said your opponent's next hero power costs 5 more, I actually think this would be played in pretty much every deck. Because at some point during the game, your opponent's going to hero power. But the fact that all you're saying is, oh, your opponent has to play dudes next turn instead of using their hero power, it's not really going to interrupt the plays from decks most of the time like you're playing an underpowered three mana four three and their play is still doing everything it would for that amount of mana but uh you're giving them like one less option between two reasonable options so it's really not that impressive recruiter says inspire at a two two squire to your hand this is just way too slow for a five mana card the stats are too bad um that's all i can really say like Five, five mana is competitive, seven mana is competitive. I'm not going to play this over Sludge Belcher or Quartermaster or anything like that, or Harrison or Lothab. It's just uh, not going to see play, in my opinion. Chillmaw, Taunt, Death Rattle. If you're holding a dragon, deal three damage to all minions. Well, this is a uh, hell of a dragon. I mean, it's kind of a cool bridge between the super late game and the medium-sized dragons um definitely great against patron definitely a powerful effect 
you can't really play it if you're too far ahead on board unless you don't have a dragon, which is then kind of interesting. Um, I, I think it definitely will see a ton of play. I expect to run this in pretty much all my dragon decks um, just because the stats are solid. It, it's one of those cards that's actually good when you're behind and you have the opportunity to play it when you're ahead. If you're ahead, you're winning anyway. It doesn't matter that you would choose to play things other than your seven mana card, you know? If I have, like, an Azure Drake and a Hero Power, maybe I just do that instead of playing Chilma. If I don't want my Chilma to blow my own crap up, like, you have the control of when this is played. So uh, it's definitely a very good card. I expect this to see play in pretty much every Dragon deck. It's what the Dragon decks want, for sure. Moving on, we got Bolf Ram Shield, just six mana, <clears throat> three nine. Uh, whenever your hero takes damage, this minion takes it instead. I've already given my opinion on Healing Touch. Healing Touch is not a good card. This is basically 6 mana for a Healing Touch because both does not deal deal the damage to the minions that uh, hit you in the face. I play both and my opponent hits me in the face for 9 and both is dead and all his minions are still alive. If you compare that to giving both Taunt, uh, taunt would actually let him deal his three damage to the minions that are attacking him. So there are corner cases where this is better, <clears throat> where it stops you from dying to direct damage like fireballs and all of that, and maybe it can help you lock up a game in some way. I, I guess it is powerful with other taunts. Maybe I play both and then I taunt up something else um, to protect both, but it, and then both is like insurance against direct damage or something. But I think he's just too easy to deal with. Sap, Doomsayer, I don't know, they can just burn through him, and he's really just a healing touch. Uh, the stats are just not good enough, I think, on this guy. Moving forward, we got Lance Bearer. I don't know if I've covered this guy yet, <clears throat> but he's pretty good. Um, they definitely made some overpowered uh, buff cards before. Shattered Sun Cleric and Dark Iron Dwarf were both nerfed. That's how good they were. Uh, Lance Bearer is... Um, it's a card that deliberately has much weaker stats um, for a two-mana card compared to something like Abusive. You know, Abusive, you're getting that 2-1, but you're you're getting that two attack that for one turn, but you're also getting a reasonably priced creature. Lance Bearer is not a reasonably priced creature. This card is like awful stats. Um, a ton of Hobgoblin synergy is definitely something that I wouldn't be surprised to, to see played in a lot of aggressive decks. The, the battle cry effects where you get to buff the attack of something is sick. This is not like abusive. The buff is actually permanent um, if your minion does randomly get to attack twice in a row. So you're going to feel a lot better about playing this just onto the board rather than abusive. Whereas abusive, you always kind of hold on to. You're like, oh, I'll just get that two damage next turn. And then you hold off on it because they didn't play anything that makes sense to trade into. Uh, point is, Lance Bear is strong. I expect it to see playing Hobgoblin lists. And I might see playing just uh, aggressive decks outside of that. Maybe maybe even Hunter, maybe Zoo. Zoo more likely Zoo than Hunter. Um, but yeah, definitely a good card. I'm excited for it. I expect it to be efficient and see some play. It also gives you another uh, reasonable neutral card to activate a Ruby and Egg with. Uh, so maybe we'll start to see that card in more aggressive decks outside of just Zoo. And then we got Captured Jormungar, which is a 7-mana 5-9. Pretty good stats for Arena. Uh, the Beast Synergy is going to matter a lot in Arena, uh, especially because it's a neutral, because now you have Beast Druid cards and Beast Hunter cards. So it's going to make drafting a lot more fun, more synergies, not just taking the best card every time. Kvaldir Raider is uh, going to see about as much play as Floating Watcher did. I guess you can play this guy in non-Warlock classes, but even then... Uh, you know, 5 mana is really competitive. Nobody needs more 5 mana dudes, especially when they're just a pile of stats. So this is not going to see much play. Pit Fighter is a 5 mana 5-6, five, and it has no text, but this actually might see play, believe it or not. If you compare it to Lotheb, <clears throat> you lose out on a really strong ability, but you get one health. But that extra health is so important, um, because there are a lot of things that can deal 5. Um, well, mostly just like Lotheb, Harrison, Deathbite on the second charge. Uh, but Pit Fighter is really inconvenient to kill, and he comes down pretty early, and it fights things like Shield Maiden, Sludge Belcher. Like, it's not impressive. This, it has no text or anything, but the way that these specific numbers line up in the current metagame, at least, 
uh, are very good for five mana five sixes. And personally, uh, I'm a grown ass man. I'm not above playing Stranglethorn Tigers in my deck. And this is very comparable to Stranglethorn Tiger in a lot of ways. So yeah, uh, I, I don't think it'll see play just because deck slots will be too competitive, but it's not nearly as bad as it looks, uh, even when you're thinking about Constructed. And in Arena, it's fantastic. Uh, then we got Evil Heckler. Twitch chat finally gets its uh, its own Hearthstone card. Four mana, five, four taunt. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's better than Booty Bay Bodyguard, but if I'm putting a taunt in my deck, it is to stop me from dying, uh, which means that I'm going to prefer Senjin's stats over this card every time. Uh, but in Arena, very solid uh, for sure. Definitely a strong card. Frigid Snowbold, spell damage plus one, four mana, two, six. <coughs> uh, the stats are bad, but not completely awful. Personally, I think spell damage is just... It's one of those mechanics that's always felt very uh, inconsistent to me. Like, you'll, you'll play a Blood Mage sometimes, but even Blood Mage isn't a very good card anymore. Nobody plays it. Like, you... You want to just curve out, you want to snowball an early board lead, and you want to have burst somewhere in your deck to capitalize on your early board lead or to give you a chance when you're behind. That's just how Hearthstone works. Spell power doesn't really fit into that equation anywhere. <clears throat> what you're gaining from this frigid snowball, from the extra spell damage, you're losing out from uh, missing the stats. So it's like, spell damage is fine when you're getting it for free on a card like Azur Drake, which might see play just because of the card draw anyway. Um, but, like, this is just not, you're, you're losing a stat point and, you're, and freeze, and you're gaining spell damage, and it's, it balances out even when everything goes right and you actually get to buff your spell. But then every time you play your spell, like Frostbolt on, like, a piloted shredder, in those cases, it doesn't even matter if you have the spell damage. So then you'd rather have, just have this be, like, water elemental. So... Yeah, like, and sometimes you'll play this and then you just won't draw your spells before it dies. And then you'd also rather have it be Water Elemental. So it's kind of like all the stars have to align for spell damage to be relevant. And then even when it's relevant, it's uh, roughly the same outcome as just having better stats on this guy. So I don't like that it's missing stats to pay for spell damage. Like, if Blizzard wants spell damage cards to see play, they should, it should be free. It should be like Taunt on this Evil Heckler card. Um, where it's lost Tall Strider, basically, except it... Or whatever, whatever the fucking ostrich card is called. Um, except you're basically just getting Taunt for free. Um, it, it's like it's like Taunt level of, of, of uh, ability, you know? Spell damage should come on creatures for free if they want them to be costed competitively. Next, we got Refreshment Vendor. Battle Cry, Restore 4 health to each hero. This card's really interesting. Um... The thing about Antique Heal Bot is that it gains you a ton of life, but then you play it against like mid range or control decks, and it's just like a blank in your hand. It's just crap, like an awful card. Because the stats are so awful, you're just you're playing it for the battle cry, and the battle cry only matters in like half your matchups. Refreshment Vendor is actually kind of an amazing card. Like, <clears throat> it fights piloted shredder. The stats are very good. It gains you a very reasonable amount of life. It's not eight life, but four is very good. Uh, and you can just like play it on curve in a deck that doesn't care about your opponent's life total. This card's great at slowing the game down. I actually think this might see a ton of play in control decks, and uh, it, it it's really like a bold statement. But o outside of things like Warlock, this might just be better than Healbot um, in a lot of ways. I think that a deck that wants to play Antique Healbot will want to play Refreshment Vendor, um, with the exception of maybe Rogue. But even in Rogue, you'd kind of want a good like body like this on curve refreshment vendor is awesome uh this card the art and it's, it's a walrus it's got pine stuff everything about this card is like 10 out of 10 I, I like this guy a lot i think this is uh kind of being an overlooked card i guess i actually expect this to see a good amount of play in uh, defensive decks um dragon hawk rider inspire gain wind fury this turn Hmm. That's crap. Um, Thralmar Farseer is bad because it has three health and it dies right away when you play it. This card also has three health and will also die right away when you play it. And 
when it doesn't die, it doesn't already have Wind Fury, but rather you have to hero power on turn four instead of playing your Shredder just to get it to do something. It, it's just not good. Um, in Arena, I guess it would be reasonable. You threaten to take out two other guys. Uh, if it lives, kind of like Raging Worgen, but worse. All right, then we got Ice Rager. Second example of blatant power creep. Uh, I don't know. When I play Mortal Kombat, I've always been more of a Scorpion fan rather than Sub-Zero, so I'm a little salty that Magma Rager is smaller than Ice Rager, but eh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm kind of impressed by how good 3-mana uh, 5-2s are whenever I play the Druid card um, that you can choose to make a 5-2. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Something of the Phoenix or the Flame or whatever. Drew to the Flame, maybe. Um, yeah, so 3-mana uh, 5-2 is actually pretty good, but you're not going to see a vanilla card like this uh, in Constructed. People are going to play Wolf Riders in their aggressive decks. They're going to play Earth and Ring Farseers in their defensive decks. Uh, there's really no place for a card like this uh, when it's competing against things like Shade and X Ramus and Death Lord, all of these role-specific cards. Uh, Bone Guard Lieutenant is Inspire, gain one health. Um, it's, it's pretty terrible. I mean, as far as Constructed goes, it's not going to see play. In Arena, it's fine. It's like a filler two drop. It's there to help you have a good curve. But yeah, in Constructed, the two drops are just amazing right now, especially with this new set giving us Garrison Commander and all that stuff. So I don't expect uh, Bone Guard Lieutenant to see too much play. And last but not least, we have Tournament Attendee which is Goldshire Footman with flipped stats. And uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a card. It does things and stuff. It has stats. Not much to say about this. I think it'll see about as much play as Goldshire Footman, but I think it is a little bit better. Goldshire Footman, fun fact, I almost played that back in the day. Goldshire Footman is the reason that I discovered Shield Bearer in Zoo because I started with two Footman, one Shield Bearer, just to test the one-mana taunts to have more Void Walkers. And I realized Shield Bearer was being amazing every game, and uh, Goldshire Footman was not as good as Shield Bearer. So then I went to two Shield Bearer, one Footman, cut the Footman. There we go. So maybe this is better in things like Zoo. It at least forces people to kill it, but that's kind of the case with every 2 1. If they have a hero power, they're going to want to kill it um, with like Lepronome or something. So probably won't see play in anything, but it has a better chance than Footman. All right, well. That is my review of every card that's been spoiled in the set. I'm going to go ahead and do a comprehensive kind of like metagame type of video where I, I, it's just going to be a short rundown of how I think things will play out uh, after uh, the set is released. So be sure you check that out. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to, have to, try, to, I'm going to try to have that video released like in a day or so. And uh, yeah, until next time. Looking forward to the set. It'll be exciting. Thank you for watching this whole thing. And uh, my voice is shot because I did all this in one sitting. All right. See you guys.